The waves are quite calm today, but over the past few days, as we're coming to the end of winter here, the waves have been quite ferocious and powerful, a bit like the call for the second referendum in the United Kingdom. But as I sit here on my balcony overlooking the Atlantic Ocean, it seems to me that there are four questions that need to be answered before we can ask for a second referendum. Question one is what is the status quo? In other words, do we accept that we have had a referendum and if no second referendum gives any clear indication of where we want to go, do we follow the result of the, of the first referendum? Or do we say that the first referendum was built on a lot of lies and misconceptions and misinformation and that is the very reason why we have to have a second referendum and so therefore the first referendum is null and void. In which case the status quo is that we stay in the EU and if we do accept that the first referendum is legitimate then the status quo is that we've decided to leave. And the reason why question one is important is because it informs our decision of question two and question three. Question two is what do we actually want on the ballot paper? Do we just have a simple yes or no to the final agreement that the government has managed to secure with the EU. And if that's the case, and we don't then accept that final agreement, we revert to the status quo. And as question one tells us, we need to know what that status quo is. If we have more than just that simple option on the ballot paper, that maybe we, we actually then include the options of remaining in the EU or just leaving the EU without any agreement or maybe even do we then say that if the agreement that we have with the EU is not acceptable we have to go back to the EU and negotiate further assuming that they will allow us to do so. Question three is how do you win the referendum. Do we go with a simple majority as we did with the previous referendum? Or do we go for a set percentage, for example 60-40 or a three-quarter majority win? In which case that's going to be much harder to achieve if we have more than two options on the ballot paper and in which case many people will say well the option the winning option in the first referendum was 50 percent if we then have to split the vote over three or even four options it's very unlikely that we're going to get a sizable majority in the second referendum so again it brings us back to that first question if we don't have the sizable majority, if we don't have anything like a clear winner, we revert back to the status quo. And again, question one, what is that status quo? And then we have the fourth question, which is who should be allowed to vote? Do we decide to keep the voting structure that we had with the previous referendum. It could be argued that that is the fairest system to have because it's going to allow us the easiest comparison and therefore the easiest way to indicate any change in public opinion. Or do we say, well, with the last referendum, we didn't allow young people to vote and it's going to affect them so let's also include 16 and 17 year olds. By implication do we then say 
if you are of a certain age, you are not eligible to vote, perhaps from the age of 75 or 80, because you are going to be less affected by any outcome in the referendum. And also, do we allow long-term expats who have been outside of the UK for 15 years or more to vote? Because unless we answer all of these questions, it is clear we have learned nothing from the farce of the first referendum. Theresa May was ridiculed for simply saying that Brexit means Brexit, but in reality that's probably the truest statement she's ever made regarding Brexit. It is something that has not been defined and as we go through the process, Brexit becomes whatever it is. We cannot afford to make the same mistake again. Second referendum cannot just mean second referendum. We cannot afford to let politicians like Tony Blair and Nick Clegg to just bleat on about a second referendum. It means nothing. And as the people of the United Kingdom, we need to hold our politicians and indeed our journalists to account and get them to ask and answer these totally important questions. Because we don't want second referendum to mean just second referendum. So leave a comment in the comment section below. Answer the questions. Let's start the debate. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.